Welcome to another episode of Dante might have OCD, but he's not ready to admit it, so just click the like button and leave him alone. Hello, you dirty potters. How are you today? This video is going to be a little bit short, but it is an extremely important episode. There's one trick that I've been meaning to show you guys for quite some time that can change your entire organization game for your entire studio. Now look, you guys know me by now. You know I'm not into clickbaiting you, so when I say this is a really, really important episode, I actually mean it. This one little trick I learned from my college days in doing ceramic artwork is the one thing that really helped organize the rest of the classroom. So whether you're in a classroom, you're in your own home studio, or you even have a shared space studio where you're like a production potter even, you really need to know this trick. But let's start off with the basics real quick. Right now, the camera's sitting on my kiln. My kiln, of course, when we open it up, are these little stilts here. And this is technically called kiln the furniture. These little stilts are used to set up my kiln shelves so that when I do my glaze work, all the glazes don't touch each other because if they do, they'll mold together. The glaze ends up melting, it sticks to my shelves, it sticks to the cat and the dog. It's the singular reason why you can't have a lot of your stuff touch. But half the time, whenever potters end up loading this for a glaze kiln, they end up just kind of trying out sizes and making sure that nothing goes above these little stilts right here. Because these stilts, of course, have shelves on them and the shelves much like this will sit like this and if anything is above these of course it's going to stick to the very bottom of the next shelf that goes up every single level so most potters just kind of end up trying different sizes and making sure that their pieces don't go over this right here just to really clarify that point for anyone who's never loaded a kiln this piece right here is clearly taller than this stilt right here right so if i put the next shelf right here it's either going to smash this piece or if it barely fits the top of this is going to fuse to the next level of shelf. And that's a no bueno. Yeah, Dante, I already know all this. I'm not new. You hold on there, smarty pants. I'm going to teach you something. You'll probably notice over here that I have all of my kiln stilts and all my kiln furniture kind of set over here and organized just how I like it. But you'll probably also notice that I have extra ones. Wait, why would I have extra ones if I bought the exact amount that I need? Considering I really only need about four of these, to set up one level because half shelves usually share this middle section right here. What, why, why Dante? Why do you have multiple of these if you don't need them? I know, it's because in case one of these breaks, he has extras, of course, he's so well prepared. I'm not that well prepared. I have one extra of each and every one of these aside from the super big ones and some zip ties right here because I'm about to blow your mind. These here, like you guys have seen in last episodes, are my greenware shelves. I put them here after I'm done crafting them and trimming the bottoms and all that. And then I put them in the kiln, they become bisque, and after that I put them on the bisque shelf. The bisque shelf ends up becoming the glaze shelf, and then I end up putting them in my kiln way over there where they go to those shelves over there, which is all my glaze work. And usually what most people try and do is they try and get their cups all to be exactly the same size, especially if you're a production potter and you're just making cups or bowls all day. You kind of want everything to be the same size so that it fits in the kiln. So you kind of just end up eyeballing half your stuff and going, well, all these cups are relatively the same size, so they should fit. You don't have to do that anymore with this trick. Check this out. The reason why I have extras of these inside of my possession is because when I was in college, I saw my teacher, Yosho Taylor, do this one trick that blew my mind. And this is how he organized everything so well. He got an extra one of these for every single shelf. He would put it right here, and this would now be the standard for how high his mugs can go. After this, he would essentially get the zip ties that I showed you earlier, right? Grab one of these, wrap it around the kiln furniture, just like this. And this right here, this singular shelf, if you put anything on here, cannot go above this kiln stilt. This was magic to me when I first saw it because after a while when so many students or even yourself ends up putting so many things up here, you just end up knowing, oh, okay, so this specific kiln furniture, this specific kiln stilt right here that holds up your shelves is the thing that you're going to use for this level. So if you just want to load all this level of shelf going all the way down to the rest of my shelves, you now know that everything underneath this specific stilt is going to fit that shelf. This is magic to me. This is 
This is prime organization. Of course, if Jesus Christ himself gave you the gift of OCD, much like me when you were born into this planet Earth, you're gonna have this little thing right here that kind of sticks out, right? If you wrap it around, you can very easily just get a little knife and just cut this off so that it doesn't haunt your dreams. Now when you're loading your kiln, you can just go, oh, okay, it's time for me to load everything that would fit this specific kiln furniture, this specific stilt right here. And you could just take this entire shelf and just load it in with ease without doing all that guesswork. You guys have no idea how much better I feel having these here. Oh, I was, it was messing up my organization game for sure. Now I don't have to do all that guesswork when I'm putting in my glaze and my bisque and my greenware. I can literally just put it on the shelf that it was meant to be on because that's exactly how tall it is and that's where it belongs. This is also a really good way to save a lot of time and keep your studio organized, especially if you have a shared studio. Let's say you're someone who runs a shared studio or you run a studio that many other people come into and they kind of pay you for it. If you own that kiln and you have to load the kiln, now the guesswork is taken out. You don't have to go, hmm, what fits here? Now you just know what stilts you're gonna have to take out to fit onto one shelf. It literally saves you half the time of loading your kiln. The trick I just showed you is essentially just to take all of the guesswork out of loading your kiln. Oh, will my giant teapot fit on there? Let's find out. It's not underneath this little bracket here, so clearly it's not gonna fit. It needs to go on another shelf with a higher bracket or a higher measurement. Okay, I knew that this one obviously wasn't gonna fit, but like, you get the point. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. I really just wanted to show you guys this one little trick right here. This trick is super simple, and it has saved me dozens of man hours of actually loading my kiln. You will not believe how simple, easy, and actually functional this trick is. Especially if you're somebody who's just pumping out mugs or bowls all day long, now you can actually pre-organize a lot of your bisque and glaze work. I know I just showed you guys how to do it on the greenware right here, but this also works with glaze work as well. It actually works a little bit better with glaze work because the bisque can touch each other in the kiln, but the glaze cannot touch each other. That's, that's a no, no, no. If you'd like to see any of my actual artwork, the links are down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see. The Instagram is, it's, it's spicy. And of course, the Facebook fan page is there to make sure you guys keep up with the videos. I love your dirty Potter faces. I will see you guys next week.